Good morning, and as promised, this morning we're taking you on this chocolate tour, and we're pretty excited because, uh... Somebody wants to see the ribbon. I just found that on the beach. There's Jeannie. Hi, I'm gonna go get my water shoes. Okay. And we're here with our friends, Alf, down there, and Ray Kren, and that's Mike, and that's Barney over there. Hi, Barney. And we're all gonna get on Camillo's boat and take a ride to this island where the chocolate plantation is. And of course, you've already met Sharon, the owner of Sand Dollar. Jeannie found this. In the sand? I don't know. That's weird. Good morning, amigos. Como se llama usted? Fernando. Fernando, and that's Carmelo? Yes, sir. Okay. Who's getting on first and how we do it? The best way to get on is to sit your butt on the side and then flip your legs over. Okay. See how she does it? Yeah. That's the way to do it. Barney's gonna have it the e Barney will have it the easiest because he just gets put down. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. She went back to get her water shoes. Thank you for arranging this, Sharon. That's just one of the many things Sharon does. She arranges stuff for you. Another another big reason why you want to stay at the Sand Dollar. White glove service. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I am going to do take Sharon's advice. You sit, you swing your legs over, and then you jump on. Tomas? Oh, yeah, uno mas. My mi espousa. Yep. Okay. Uno mas. Okay, amigo, yeah. you're gonna be there and your wife here? Or your wife? Well, I think we're gonna come to the back. Oh, un momento. What? I wasn't no. sure how to put the Oh, okay. You won't need them. I walk all the way up there. Okay. The Sorry. Back? Yeah, but. Once again, my fault. Yeah. Okay, now what you do is you turn around, you sit on it, and okay, swing your feet over. I, I can't sit on that. You're gonna wanna come here. On this side. On this side, yeah. I know why he wants to be with his Okay, okay please. Please put your weight a little bit. Your weight. la lancha, chicho. He's gonna pull it back in. He's pulling it back in for you. Okay, now. Come. Mikey. You want Mikey here? Mikey, come in here. Okay, Papa. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Fernando? I remembered. I'm so proud. Here's Jeannie. She's a little mad at me because I didn't give her the key. I walked all the way up there for nothing. Sorry, sorry. And let me introduce you to Ray Kren and Alf Kren and our friend Mike and Barney. They are going to be joining us on this chocolate tour today. And you've already met Carmelo and Fernando. So, we are all here. Do you want us to put these on? Oh, oh, Not necessary. Okay. Here we go. Fair off. Muscles. And that's how easy it is. You walk from the sand dollar across the street to the beach, they pick you up. And this is how we roll to what island? Huh? That's what island? Coronado. No. That's an access, isn't it? Where? Where are we going? Or? Yeah. No, we're going on the mainland on the Green Acres, right? Mm. The chocolate factory. The chocolate farm. Okay. Yeah, what island? Oh, it's not the island, it's on the mainland. Oh, it's on the mainland. Okay, we're going to the mainland. 
Jeannie's not taking any chances. Well, they have life vests on, so what do you, need, what's that tell you? Need is Fernando's not taking any chances either. He's good, he's all set. We go, we go over. He doesn't have to, he doesn't have to dick around putting on the vest. Huh? It's compulsory. Oh, okay. Camilo, do we all need to put on our life preservers or not? Am I apart? You need to put it on. Okay. And off we go. And, we're off. and again, as we leave the sand dollar. It's a little cloudy right now, but that's nothing. These things pass right by. We could have really nice sun within 30 minutes. You never know. I'm going to put my hat down before I lose it this is cool remember through the Facebook check-in that's where we ate dinner Utamio Refugio really really good highly recommend that restaurant you come here you go there there's the pirate ship that's where we came in from the port and came this way The crab, but I believe it's closed. This is Green Acres. <laughs> All right. Even if we pull the one at the tanker, we have a little more fuel. I like to travel a little more fuel. Ah, gotcha. What's he saying? He needs more fuel. Okay, we're doing a fuel. We're doing a fuel stop. Buenos dias. We're doing a fuel stop, and then we'll be on our way. No big deal. So, give you a little quick view before I cut it. Everything in Bocas is a very very easy boat ride to get to okay we got our gasoline and we're off These boats we're on is the main form of transportation between the islands. And it's very reasonably priced. You're not taken advantage of.
don't know if you can see it because of the clouds, but there's a huge mountain drop in the background. Camilo being the good man that he is, he's gonna bring you guys right past this pirate ship. So we're gonna get a good look at that. I don't know if you can see it, but the name of the pirate ship is Black Magic. How cool is that? Black Magic. I ain't me Bucky's. Okay, onward! like going through the bar to Everglades. It's just beautiful. You can tell how pristine, pristine and natural it is. I hope you can see that mountain range in the back because it's such an impressive backdrop. He's going to bring us right through there. How cool is that? That he's going to put us right through there. Oh, wow. Talk about going through something really cool. How do you like that? I like it a lot. Let's make a shortcut. Panama Canal. <laughs> <laughs> Number one sea captain. Yes, thank you. When you're going through the mangroves, it's tough in the mangroves. We're on our way. Look at all the fish down here, John. Over on the island. And these are the mangroves, and there's a tough crew. They 
how well served for all this is. It's the Panama. There's all sorts of fish down there. It's coming out of the mangroves here. How cool was that? Just one of the many surprises, or shall I say even better, these are some of the hidden gems that you find when you get the right okay, captain. Okay, we've just entered Dolphin Bay, and the reason they call it that, obviously, is because there's a lot of dolphins that are in here. I don't know if we'll see them today, but nevertheless, we saw them at Kalamia, so you all know what the dolphins look like. But this water is absolutely glass. We're going, we're going over glass. And crystal clear. And, and crystal clear. That's right. I saw fish as we were going by. I could, that's how I could see at least 12 feet down. Jeannie says she could see at least 12 feet down. I'm not sure if the front microphone picked that up or not. Actually, we did get fine dolphin here in Dolphin Bay. I want to get like two, three, go around. Like there they are. Around. And Camilo's, go, Camilo's going to come over and he's going to bring us over there. And there they are. I don't see any jellyfish. Okay, we wait for the dolphin to come down. Okay. Now we wait, they're shy, but they have to come up for air. As you know, they're mammals. We came here before on this dolphin tour. Might be enough, you right. know. We've seen them They're jumping everywhere. to ride, ride the waves, you see? It's fun for them. This is fun for them. They like to ride the waves. <laughs> this is how they entertain themselves. We just go in a circle and they follow us because it's a lot of fun for them. Cool is this?
frente y agarra a la señora que está al frente, no puede darse mucho por la espalda. I think we're here, you know, I don't know, never been here before. We're all exploring this for the first time together. Yes, Green Acres. Yep, it says Green Acres. Chocolate we are Farm Tour. Green Acres, that's right, Jeannie. Oh, yeah, but... John Gre likes chocolate. I do, so does Alf. Green Acres Chocolate Farm Tour. I have a feeling this might be our guide. Good morning! We're so happy to be here. What's your name? Gary. 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 And who are you? John. John, welcome to Green Acres. Thank you. This is my wife, okay. Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. What's up? How Hi. are you? And this is, we don't, there won't be a test on the names. There this, will be a test on the plants, though. Okay. So you know this is Alf. And this is Ray. Hi. 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 And Mike in Hi. the back. Hi, Mike and in Barney. the back. And Barney. Hey, oh. Barney, what's up? Barney. Oh, yeah, he's my road dog. <laughs> I just awesome. moved here from Las Vegas. I, I knew that, señora. You moved here? They did. Mike oh. and Barney. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Welcome to paradise. Yeah. So it looks like uh, Gary has binoculars, and Corey, can you tell us about what things we might have wanted to be bring? Well, I, and you guys really I basically have the binoculars, so hopefully I can spot no, she things has the right one. Right. But if we see yeah. something that oh, needs you binoculars, you John, I, I will like share. Thank you. I'm that guy. Right. So, tell us about how well, people should have... Maybe we shouldn't have had flip-flops. What what's your... I, I wear these because they're comfortable. I wear right. Crocs, but today we're pretty, pretty much okay because of the rains. Okay. But a lot of times there are ants. And I'll get all excited about telling guys about some plant, and I'll forget to say, look out for the ants! Right. So, okay. Chocolate-covered ants. Not yet, honey, but we, if you'd like some, we can have some made for you. <laughs> you want bees, right? I'm sorry? Bees. Bees. Well, we are in a jungle in a rainforest, so... Okay. And if you look above you, there are a bunch of wasps. Oh, wonderful. Okay, and I didn't bring my, I didn't bring my EpiPen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's move out. Okay, so just right. so you know, Gary's going to be doing all the narration. So um, I changed the camera to the front microphone so that we can really hear him. Check. I don't know if you can see this. The water's crystal clear. There's fish everywhere. I knew it was a plantation. I sure so it is, better. but if I'd known that, I would have been more prepared okay. for a lot of things, like the shoes. <laughs> when Gary's not busy, a lot of times he uh, likes to whittle, so he's whittled a couple of boats here for himself. Well, if I could, let me tell you about this. Okay. This is called a zuela. Everybody say zuela. 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 And the zuela is what was used to make the cayucos. Everybody say cayuco. Cayuca. Oh man, you guys are professionals. Cayuco. So, um, tell me your name again, darling. Alfred. 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 So, Thanks Alfred. For calling me darling. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, we're <laughs> trying to make everybody feel pretty here, right? <laughs> so, now I'm gonna have like darling stuck in my head too. <laughs> darling Alfred. It only took two months to make one of those, but I think that you could probably make one a little bit sooner. Right yeah, you I think so. Muscles? I think so. It, it depends if you gave him a beer or not. <laughs> well, is this a we heat have, that I should stay? We have chocolate and we have chocolate rum. Oh. If you pass the test. Good for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, so um, have you guys already seen Cayucos yeah. hanging out? Yes. I yeah. Am. Quite a few. Let's find out where's everybody from first of all. John, where are you from? Well, we just recently retired, so um, we we sold our house and we sold, gave away, or threw out everything we own. I understand. And we're traveling the whole world now and documenting it on our YouTube travel channel. And so your originally, is called is spontaneous today. Sponta I feel spontaneous. Do you feel spontaneous? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! We are and, spontaneous. Right. And today. this this is for you. Thank you. You can hold that up. There you go. He's it. He's now tagged. And I apologize but, for being so shy, guys. That's okay. But uh, before that, we were 50 miles north of um, New York City in Fairfield County, in out of in Connecticut. Very cold. I'm allergic to cold. So, 
you're you are traveling the world and tell me with your name again ray ray uh, we're from and darling alfred and darling and alfred. alfred we're both australian but live in america for 34 years well nashville I'm, tennessee i'm sorry that you left australia I, I, oh well Something. Anyway, uh, that is one of my favorite places, beautiful. especially Queensland. Yep, mm -hmm. where we were from. Oh, at, the I mean, Barrier Reef. The birds are insane, mm -hmm. insane. I'm a bird fanatic. You so. love the cockatoos and the, the. Remind me to show you when I got here. I made myself promise that I would take time out of my world to learn how to paint. And my favorite painting. painting that I've done so far is the Major Mitchell cockatoo. Oh my God. That is my Beautiful. favorite. My last name is Mitchell John, but it has nothing to do with it, okay? okay. Don't start rumors. Nope. Don't start them. <laughs> Absolutely not. not. Yeah. So we have Ray and Darling Alfred. And from Nashville. Tennessee. You can call him Alf. We've been here Alf. four months. Alf. Alf. Yeah. Alf is good. Yeah. It is. Alfie. Alf. Alfie. Yeah. Oh, Remember Alfie's movie, even Alfie? better. Remember Alfie? <laughs> I don't, but I love it. Uh, That's it awesome. It was, um, what was his name? Yeah. Michael Caine. Michael Caine played Alfie. Mm -hmm. Or Alfred E. So Newman. So we've been on the island four months here four in months. Tennessee. Four okay. uh, Here in Bocas del Toro. Oh, and did you move here? Not yet. Uh, but you're going to. We're, look, yeah. we're looking. This is a great place to live. Great yeah, place. Yeah. And tell me your name again, sir. Mike. Mike and... Barney. California. And Barney. This is, this is about Barney. Barney, where dollars. are you from in California? Uh, San Fernando Valley. I'm so sorry. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, a little bit about us, if you'd like. Well, he lives here now. So. He moved here. Oh, that's right, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's my first week as a permanent resident. Woohoo! So, what is that? Do you have like papers and stuff now, or or what? I don't. Zigzags. Not my residency yet. We don't either, because I was gonna feel really inferior if you already did. <laughs> so, a little bit about us, if I may, Mr. John. Please. So my name is Gary Mitchell and we are from LA. Yeah, so I get <laughs> right? the two to five hours in traffic every day. Oh. And yeah, we don't even want to really go there. We live 10 years in LA. Like I'm so sorry, Ray. To look like. Oh, okay. Yeah. I.E. Burbank. Right. <laughs> I used to work at NBC Studios. So. Did you? Yeah. No, no, well. So let me see if I got this right. Ray. Out. Darling Alfie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Alfie. Don't forget the yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mike. Mike and Barney. And Barney and Ginny and John. Jeannie. 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 Jeannie in a bottle. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Are we going to see some uh, Barbara Eden moves? <laughs> well, more Are... like a beach whale. <laughs> oh, no, darling. No, 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 no. So, as I mentioned, we're from LA. Um, I'm here with my husband, Carlo. According to everyone, including me, he is definitely my better half. So, what are you looking at? I thought it, we'll I thought be the it judge of that. Iguana, it's a leaf. Someone stepped on. It. It's, a leaf, it's a leaf, but it's a cool leaf. What is that? What is these oranges? They are. How about those ears? <laughs> so we got here. We've been here for a year and three months. What brought us here? What brought you here, Gary? I'm glad you asked. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> I started in, oh, there's a beautiful tropogon right up there. He's red. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen one of those in a while. All the way up the top. There's no way we're going to see that Absolutely with the Hero 9. Absolutely gorgeous. Who yeah. would like to see the binoculars? You guys see where he is? It's Pumpkin Sal. No, I yeah, wish it was. Big. So, welcome again to Green Acres. What brought us here, I started in nonprofit. To help the environment in 2002. I was pretty panicked at that point about the direction the environment was heading. I would like to say, Mike, that things were better now. Cool. But right now they're not. They're they're really bad. Yeah. Right, Ray? Yeah. So humans are causing the extinction of about 200 species every day right now. Mm -hmm. So after spending 17 years in San Dimas, California, doing everything we could think of to try to get people excited about the environment, including I would write. Um, original echo musicals, we would do Earth Day festivals. We opened up an animal sanctuary in our backyard. We had over 350 animals in our backyard, 37 species of birds. We would do everything we could think of. We would do plant-based food festivals because we found out the majority of the rainforest in the Amazon was destroyed by the cattle industry, mm -hmm. right? right? So we just got to the point where we felt like we needed to do more than just talk about the, the problem. 
So we looked for a place, uh, first of all, in Costa Rica. I couldn't believe Costa Rica in the last 20 years that I, since I had been there, had turned into LA. Mm -hmm. Areas where it was just, just cars and buildings. Even and on the everything. Pacific side? That specifically where I'm talking about. Where Manuel Antonio, certain areas that I had been to before that I fell in love with, like in 95, were just completely different. So searching the web, I found this place called Rambala Jungle Lodge. Rambala is about three hours from here. Looked amazing. I told my husband, this, I feel something when I look at this. And so I said, well, let's go check it out. So in October of 2018, we came to check out this place. It was beautiful, but to get there, you had to off-road for about 25 minutes. Then you had to climb up the mountains for another 20 minutes. And great on the website, really beautiful, but the idea of having to do that every day, plus they had a couple ponies that they were using, and they really looked like they needed a vacation, right? The lady that was hired to show us that place, she wasn't a real estate agent, she was just a friend of the owner. She said, well, you know, I have friends that are selling a chocolate farm. I had no interest. I'm like, I want to come and help the environment. I don't want to have any, you know, I, I, I mean, as far as I knew, there was probably Hershey Kiss Tree. That was about it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So Erica is someone that we both love and fear. We all have those people in our lives. Right, mm -hmm. Jeannie? Yeah, the love and fear ones, mm -hmm. right? So we went to go look at a, at a waterfall, and we came back to the lodge, and she said, well, it's all arranged. I've talked to the owners and they're waiting to meet you and I'm taking you in my boat right now. I'm like, what? So, we got here against our will, covered in mud, exhausted, jet lagged. We'd already been traveling for six hours. We just get up, not even to the stairs. And I will let you know that my husband before this, I felt like he was just kind of pacify me. Like, we'll go and look at your little rainforest, but we, we ain't selling our home, okay? We got here, he turns to me and he says, so we go back home, we sell our home, we sell our investment property, we sell everything, and this is our new home. And I'm like, chocolate! <laughs> so part of today's tour will help you understand how I learned, now I was already told that I was gonna live here, okay? You know how that is, darling Alfie, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you're like, okay. You still wanna feel good about it. This is how this is how we are, right? John, we still wanna feel like we had something to do with Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah, so I'll tell you how I know 1,000% that this is where we're supposed to be. So Green Acres, so everyone thinks of Green Acres is the place to be. Mm -hmm. That's not why it was named that. In 96, David and Linda Cerruti from San Diego came and bought this, they bought most of the peninsula from a family, Panamanian family, and their last name was Green. As a matter of fact, this used to be called Green Bay, nothing to do with Green Bay Packers, okay? Mm -hmm. Just Green Bay. Now, do you know what it's called? Green Bay? Well, the Bay. Oh, the Bay. Dolphin, Dolphin Bay. Bay, yes, yeah, Dolphin Bay. Have you seen dolphins yet? Yes. Yes. We certainly yes, did, we got yes. some nice footage of it. Ooh, dolphins. Beautiful. I can promise you that never, ever, ever, when I went to the store in Los Angeles, did I see dolphins on the way home. <laughs> and here I do. It's a pretty cool thing, pretty cool thing. So in 96, David and Linda bought this property and they turned it into basically what you see today. We're the third owners. David and Linda lived here until they could no longer handle the property. He was in his 80s, had fallen off the roof, etc. So anyway, we're the third owners. David was a home builder. Linda was the president of the San Diego Botanical Garden Society. Oh, nice. And that is why we have world-class botanical gardens. Yeah. So I'm thrilled to welcome you guys. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just talk a little bit about some of the plants as we walk up. We'll take a pit stop if anybody needs to use the restroom or leave your backpack or anything. And then we'll go on a jungle tour. Sound good? Yeah. All right, let's go. Let's go. You right? See? I'm all right. Fine. I'm still alive. Let's, let's keep it that way. This sounds so cool. I'm already enjoying it. And we, only, we just got off the dock. That's it. Oh, yeah. You know what? One time we saw that the captain of the boat 
estimated a pot of 500 dolphins just yeah. about a mile outside of Avalon. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, you guys, you guys into plants? Love. Learning okay, today. so um, I am a, just a nature freak. I mean, have you guys seen that, that t-shirt that says, I love turtles and maybe two people? Yeah. Yes, I've seen someone right? wearing it. So I'm like, I love nature and maybe like two people, right? It is awesome. As I mentioned, we had 37 species of birds in our animal sanctuary. Well, when we moved to Panama, we learned that there were over 1,000 birds in Panama. And I can tell you here, over 152 species of birds have been spotted, mm -hmm. which is really awesome for 30 acres, right? So I want to point these out. Does anybody know what these are called here? Yeah. Ginger plants. Thank you. Good job, Jeannie. In all, all honesty, all Sharon that. pointed that out to us on her property. That's Sharon how we know. Roberts? All on our property. No, uh, oh, oh, Sharon, Sharon Reeves. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sharon Reeves. Right. Yes. Awesome. So this is that. Now, this will be on your test, Mike, so pay attention, okay? <laughs> this is the red ginger, okay? So that pink one over there, what do you think that one's called? There you go. I think you're going to get chocolate. I see chocolate in your future. <laughs> so, Mr. John, if you could aim the camera down at that gorgeous white torch ginger. These of the 150 gingers that live in Panama, this is my absolute favorite. Isn't that gorgeous? We Absolutely. White, red and pink. I'm going to show you. The red ones are my favorite. Now, this must be a very sweet flower because there's ants that are just absolutely have a big picnic going oh, on right there. there. So these are heliconia. Yes. Has yes. anybody eaten a heliconia? No. I bet you yes. might have. Anybody uh, ever have bananas? Yes. 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 So heliconia. That's true. So there are 250 varieties of heliconias. The, the Panamanians are endless romantics. So the name of this heliconia here, you guys are just gonna love it. It's just gonna melt you. This is called the upside down turkey claw. <laughs> it just gets you right there, doesn't it? Doesn't it, Ray? Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful, though. Beautiful, beautiful. Don't make us touch anything because we kill every plant that we touch. You're laughing at my neck with I think the plants can handle you, darling Alfie. Yeah, they I think so. So, these, anybody know what these are? Mm -hmm. You might not even be able to tell because they're oh, kind boy. of dismissive. So this is another one of the gingers. You guys remember how many gingers there are? So far there's two. 150 in Panama, remember? I thought you meant Europe. Now this one, everyone's like, well, are these the gingers that you eat? Well, this isn't the type of ginger that we think of that we make tea out of, but this is edible. This is called the brat, and this is called the French kiss ginger. And this is the flower. And these, as long as, as long as these are, are young, they'll give you flowers every day. That's what it looks like. And these happen to be super yummy. They kind of taste lemony and they're crunchy. Let's see how many I can get for you guys to try. You get one of those every day, huh? We, um, most days we do, yeah. Do you want to share that? Check out these flowers. And then my this and then I think I saw oh here we go thank you that will be for you and Jeannie okay there you go let's let's give it a try I don't think so. <laughs> beautiful it's absolutely delicious it's crunchy mm -hmm. yeah. it's extremely sweet yet a little citrusy yes it is yeah it's, it's kind of like lemonade Mm. A crunchy lemonade. I reckon they go well in the salad. What's those yellow flowers, Gary? Yeah, that's delicious. The yellow flowers, it's a type of, of um, honeysuckle. And they call it shrimp plant. Beautiful. It is, isn't it? And yeah. behind me, this was another indicator, serious indicator, that maybe my husband was right and I was supposed to live here. Maybe you know what this is? Red bamboo. Nope. Guess again. If you looked at the top, what would you think, Mike? A red um, palm. palm. It's a lipstick palm. Lipstick palm. And this is the most amazing specimen I have ever seen in my life. And I had lipstick palm envy. I'm not embarrassed to tell you this. When we were in Hawaii, and I saw this one. I, this, I mean, it's amazing. 
So come on up here. By the way, what you hear right now? Creak, creak. Do you hear that? Those are the keel build toucans. Jeannie would just love to see a toucan. That would make her day. We had two toucans right there this morning and this these three trees were all filled with monkeys this morning. Howling monkeys? Howler monkeys, yes indeed. I call them Halley monkeys. Halley, okay. Yeah, because that's her last name. Oh, okay. <laughs> You hear them this so morning? she gets it. She gets it with the monkeys, and she gets it on the island of Hawaii. <laughs> Did you These? See the monkeys this morning? Of course. Did you guys see monkeys? I've seen heaps. Oh, oh yeah. good. Yeah, we good because we. I was gonna try to find them for you. Maybe we'll be able to see them. I do want to point out this is one of two of my favorite trees here. This is a 350-year-old ficus tree. And the reason why it was never cut down is because this wood is not good for construction. Now, what do I mean, what do I mean by never cut down? You see alongside, on either side of our ficus tree, you can see some of our cacao trees. We have over 2,500 cacao trees on our property. Some of the trees were actually planted over 150 years ago. So the best that I can figure is the United Fruit Company, which later broke up to be Dole Pineapple and Chiquita Banana, they kind of took over this whole area. And they planted cacao trees and they cut down any tree that they could use for packaging. That's why this is the only tree that we're aware of that's over 150 years old. Mm -hmm. And look at all the lives that it supports. Look at the philodendrons yeah. and the orchids and the epiphytes and the bromeliads. Absolutely phenomenal. Unfortunately, this camera doesn't do the justice of the grand uh, height of and width of this, but trust us, this tree is not only absolutely stunning, it's huge. You guys want to walk over here for a I didn't either. We do. No one told me that. I never go anywhere without that guy. Me either. I even have the back there. So has anyone, is anyone in this group married? Yeah. Jeannie and I. Yeah. Yeah. Ray, Ray and Alf. Mike, have you ever been married? No. Nope. Okay, I'm, I'm going to warn you mostly then. This is the most dangerous plant in the rainforest. Mother-in-law's tongue? Yes, ma'am. This is the mother-in-law tongue. It's very, very spiky. So beware. If you ever do get married. So word to the wise. This is our butterfly and hummingbird garden. This was one of the additions that we made to the garden is we planted all of the purple porterweed because it is a huge attractor for butterflies and hummingbirds. Yeah. And over here, this is milkweed. And this is reminiscent of one of our campaigns that we had when we were in Southern California. Milkweed is the only plant that monarch butterflies will lay their eggs on. And thank you to, I'm sure you guys have heard of Roundup Weed Spray, yes. Monsanto, right? Yes. Because of them, we have lost 96.5% of the monarch population in North America. So we started planting milkweed. Our neighbors started planting milkweed. I had lived in San Dimas for 16 years and had never seen a monarch butterfly. Once we started planting and our neighbors started planting, now every day you go back to California, you go back to that area and you will see monarch butterflies every day. As a matter of fact, we planted all this milkweed and in the last week, we have had, for the first time, monarch butterflies here laying eggs. So we're super excited about that. We um, planted a lot of milkweed and other um, uh, plants in our at our home in, in Connecticut. And when you open these up, it has like the straw in it or, or like silk and with the seeds. It's it's pretty interesting. Here, here's a good example right here, Gary. Exactly. Of what I'm talking about. And it's wet. And they float in the air and that's it's how like they and that's how they propagate. Exactly. And for anybody watching, if you want to plant milkweed seeds, you don't bury them. No. You just scatter them. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Good point. Good point. I've got a question for you. Yes, you sir. You may already have them. Do you do beehives? I'm sorry? Beehives? We do not have beehives. Are you ever thinking of doing it? Uh, yeah, we have. We have. Um, that really something that we, that's how they know what plant they're on. So if a female butterfly is going to lay eggs, then she's going to taste first to see if this is the right plant that her babies can eat. Then she's going to taste if another butterfly has already been on there. Because uh -huh. if there's another egg that was laid, they don't want to do that because the baby's going to hatch and it's going to eat 
the leaf including her egg. Right. Another thing that is amazing, have you guys ever heard that dogs are colorblind? Yes. So humans have three photoreceptors in our eyes, three cones. One for red, one for blue, one for, one for yellow. Dogs have two. Butterflies have 11. Honey, you poor brother. Butterflies see eight times more color spectrum than we do, which is really insane. This guy's a wealth of information. It's insane. And for those of you that have seen the YouTube videos of the mantis shrimp, the one that breaks the glass, yes. they have 16 cones in their eyes, which means that they can see 13 times more color spectrum than we can. We mere mortals. I mean, it's kind of, you kind of want your money back in a mm -hmm. way, you know? It's kind of not too fair. But anyway, who's butterflies are amazing. With they that, they should have passed on Cliff Clavin question. at Cheers and just brought Gary over there. This I guy knows out. everything. Little known facts. Uh, yeah, it's something useful if you're mm -hmm. doing trivia games. Absolutely. Right? So I, I had, love all this stuff, by the way. Oh, great. I had mentioned to you guys that we are a nonprofit organization called Planet Rehab. Yes. And I want to talk a little bit about one of our awesome, awesome campaigns. It rained pretty hard last night, so this guy just kind of fell, fell over. Down, right? yeah. This is Katuk. Katuk happens to have 10 times more protein than spinach. Which is pretty cool. You can eat this raw. You can eat this cooked. Uh, we put it in our eggs. We put it in stir fry. A anything that you can imagine, right? You're talking about the leaves, not the berries. The leaves and the berries. And the berries. And the flowers. And it all tastes like a snap pea. May I stop right here and yes, let, give you one more um, added value for this? It makes an absolute, and I learned this from Sharon during uh -huh. her bed and breakfast, the breakfasts, it makes an absolute gorgeous garnish. It does, yeah. On, just as an aesthetic on the plate. And we are actually going to come through here. It's just beautiful. Look at so this. So who's brown paper? Gary's a delight. We are so lucky to have him guiding us. Welcome to our botanical gardens. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I found, I found my peace in plants. Mike, you can relate to this being in LA, right? Or any of you guys that have lived in LA? When I was in the crazy muck of it all, what I would do is I would just walk through a garden or maybe even go to Home Depot and walk through their nursery. Here, look what I get to walk through. This is amazing. So I wanted to point out this plant right here. This is called cordyline. Everybody say cordyline. Cordyline. In Hawaii, this is called the Kauai tea plant. Here, they also call it palo de fuego, which is, what does that mean, Camilo? The, the fire tree? Fire stick. Uh, Palo yeah. de Fuego, right? Palo de, Palo de Fire yeah. Stick, yeah. So, in California, this is kind of difficult to grow, especially now with temperatures uh, reaching 118 degrees. Here, it's so easy to grow, you literally break a piece off, you stick it in the ground, and it grows. And, it grows. and because of the unusual color, and because it's so easy to grow, this is used as a property boundary, and it's you'll even find it on official documents that... The, the division of the property is the cordling. So that's pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and walk through here. Again, you can do this in flip-flops and if you don't feel comfortable um, with your physical ability, just put on a sturdy pair of sneakers and you'll be fine as well. So this is the palm oil palm tree. This is the, the tree that um, people harvest for palm oil. So I mentioned when you guys first um, got out of the boat that our nonprofit would have plant-based food festivals. Well, once we learned that 200 species were going extinct every day, we started asking why. And we learned that a lot of that was because of the Amazon destruction. As a matter of fact, 91% of the destruction of the Amazon is to grow crops for the cattle industry. Well, if you happen to be in Indonesia, in that part of the world, the reason the rainforest is destroyed is the palm oil. So I always let people know because people are always asking me, what can I do to help the environment? Obviously, with 200 species going extinct every day, we got to do something, right? Wouldn't you say, Alfie? Sure. So, a couple things that we can do. Every day that we choose not to eat animals, 
is a win for the planet and it's also a win for our bodies, right? Also, every day that we don't consume palm oil is also a win for our bodies because it's not good for us but it's also the reason that they are poisoning orangutans and elephants and tigers and destroying rainforests. So just a couple of things that, you know, good hints. It's also how we... in our cosmetics and lotions and shampoos and... And crackers and cookies and Nutella. And it's insidious, it's in everything. You're absolutely right. So um, if, if you go to our website, you can find a list of products. If you go to planetrehab.org, you can find products that don't have palm oil in them. Because it's hard to do that. It yes. is hard because they even change the name on it. So it's a little crazy. So you guys, welcome to our botanical gardens. I'll put his, uh, I'll, I'll link you to his website um, in our video. So these are our retention ponds. So something that's a little different here, as opposed to in California, California, the trees grow straight down because that's where they find the nutrients and that's where they find the water. Here, the rainforest soil is really, really poor quality. It's clay. And so the only really good soil is the top soil. And that's only the top three to six inches. But what happens in the rain, the rain, all the time in the rainforest is always washing out the really good soil and so you're losing it. So the Smithsonian Institute actually built these three ponds and what they do is they capture the good soil and because we're an organic farm once a year our team members will scoop out the really good soil and they'll use that to help our plants. I hear a two ponds so everybody just keep Camilo, tú lo puedes ver dónde está? El tucán. Sí. No. Tú me escuchas, ¿verdad? Sí. Bueno. Oh, we're just going to keep... Estamos arriba en la loma donde está la casa. Puede, puede ser. Sí. We're just going to keep a, a, an ear and an eye out. That's a Kill Bill tucán that we're hearing right now. Um, also, do be careful with the roots because these are superficial roots. Um, and so you don't want to trip on them. So these are basically jungle topes. In a way, yeah, and, and because, because here the roots are superficial, then the trees have to adapt another way to provide stability. So this is actually called buttress roots, and that's how they try to not topple in the rain. One of the things uh, Gary's going to try and do for Jeannie is find us a toucan, because that's on her bucket list. She'd like to see a toucan in the wild. If it happens, it happens. That would be wonderful. If it doesn't, doesn't. So I want to point out, this is one of the bromeliads that we have here. And this, I would have to say, is my favorite. And this is called Angel Wings. Just kind of reminds you of a genie, doesn't it? Just so mm -hmm. sweet and angelic. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And um, Sweet and delicate. On the other hand, up there, those little red flowers, and I'll show you one a little bit closer, that's called Hooker's Lips. Oh. So uh, that's kind of a fun one. Just so you don't think that we're too angelic here. Watch out for the roots, guys. Tope. Just another little point. If he uh, offers you the walking stick, take it. Genie. There's another labio de puta. <laughs> Poker's lips. It's really a beautiful flower, but it's pretty descriptive, I think. I didn't name the flowers, by the way. Don't shoot the messenger. I'll just point out a few of the caladium. We have absolutely gorgeous caladium. This is caladium right here. And you'll see that it is all different. It look just right here. Look at this caladium here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then look at this one right here. Right. We grow those in the U.S. on in house food, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and this here is known as watermelon plant because mm -hmm. it kind of looks. It like does watermelon. look like watermelon. We're gonna get some very nice footage today, Gary, because we're shooting 5K. Awesome. Not 4K, 5K. 
You're the man. Like in Final Tap. We're not going to go to 10. We're going to 11. <laughs> in Spinal Tap. <laughs> Ooh, this is awesome. This one is blooming just for you guys. This is my favorite torch ginger. And this is the red torch ginger. Isn't that gorgeous? It's absolutely it stunning. It, it's, it's just elegant. And it doesn't come out all the time. It's just... No. So does not. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. So this is a special treat for today. It is this. Th we ordered this special just for you, Alfie. It's very nice. Beautiful color. So in Panama, there are over 1200 orchid species. Now, some orchids are absolutely gorgeous, phenomenal, fantastic, gorgeous. This one, honey, she's as good as she gets. This yeah, she's she's a chorus girl. Yeah. She's never going to be front and center. 95% <laughs> of orchids are actually epiphytes. Do you know what that is? Male, female? Nope. Epiphyte is basically that guy in college that just kind of couch surfed, never paid rent, but didn't really make too much of a mess. That's an epiphyte. They just kind of couch surf on another. They're not parasites, right. but they're epiphytes. It's That's the yeah. yeah, and same with the air plants. Exactly, yeah. Oh, let me just point this out since we're here. This is a golden orb weaver. Oh. It's called golden. I don't know if you guys can see because it really depends on the angle. But the web of the golden orb weaver, if you look at it at the right angle, it looks like it's spun of gold. This is so unusual. This, this spider weaves a web that is so strong that it's actually used to make Kev Kevlar, is that who you Kevlar, said? Bulletproof Kevlar, vest. bulletproof vest. That's what it's made out of, out of this web. Can you see it, Mike? Yeah, yeah, there's one at my house. <laughs> oh, there you go, there you go. <laughs> that guy's small. Mikey Jones is bigger than that one. There's one also over at Chow Pizza in the backyard in her, her oh, uh, garden. Like that, yeah, really big. So I want to point And this we out. are actually going to come through here. It's just beautiful. Look at so this. So who's brown paper? Gary's a delight. We are so lucky to have him guiding us. His name is Osias and the other is Eric. And they do a fantastic job. They live here on the island? Uh, we're actually not an island. We're okay. actually the peninsula. Okay. Yeah. They live and here on the grounds? No. Okay. No, not on our grounds. Okay. One of them lives in Buena Esperanza Nobe Village and the other one lives in Charcoal Nobe Village. So we're kind of between the two of them. Okay. So you're not the green thumb person? Uh, I'm pretty good with plants. As a matter of fact, um, I don't think that you were here when we were talking about it, but we have a program where we're presenting 100... Electronics. So this is going to be products that okay, we can make we here. Ran, There's we going to be other products we're going to be exploring and making, like finishing. We ran out of battery on the Hero 9, so now I'm handheld mini to finish this off. Um, hooker lips? Yeah. Ah, we saw the hooker, we lips. Saw the hooker, the hooker lips. lips. So it's going to, so I'm working with... He guided um, up. Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Is her name <laughs> Tiffany? <laughs> <laughs> so here's going to be our partnership that we work with. Is It's called Beauty and the Beach. This is going to be all natural products. So going into the water, um, all that sunscreen, this is going to be coral safe sunscreen uh, with the SPF 20. It goes very nice and smooth. There's also a great moisturizer. You've got the lavender mint, especially with the chitras and mosquitoes. These are fantastic. And palm oil free. Yes. Palm oil free. Palm yes. oil free. She so pay attention. Good. Good job. Pays attention. A plus. Oh so uh, this is going to be after the sun. So after the sun, so if you're like dealing with like it's a hot day, spray some of this and it has that little menthol uh, oh, I love feel that. And, it's, and frankincense oil in here, but also the chitras and mosquitoes or if you have little bites, That's these funny. are fantastic. They're it's awesome. I got to get out my okay. money. And then this is going to be the uh, cleanser, like a mask of your face. And then also uh, with apple cider vinegar and rose water with maybe 20 water to help to bring your pH in your, in your face. And then also we get a little bit of sunburn. Hello, we need a little bit of love on our skin, right? So this is fantastic, it's called the solar recovery. Something nice. different, does it have aloe in it or is it something different? Uh, this one actually is gonna be different. This one's gonna have rose hip, rose hip seed oil, frankincense, myrrh, and uh, geranium. This right here. And this one is all natural stuff that we get here mm -hmm. um, with our friend from Beauty and the Beach. Buena Esperanza is the village next to us. So this is products that they make. Guess what this is made out of? Coffee beans. Coffee beans? 
Because as you're you're waiting for other responses. Uh huh. Okay. okay. I okay. say okay. shells. Shells. Yeah. They look like our shells. Because this is a shell, see? What do you think, Mikey? I see some shells. Okay. I bet you guys are gonna be surprised. It's made out of magazines, newspaper, and paper. Oh, how wonderful! Wow. So if you look closely, it's from magazine. She tears up and she makes these little beads and she uses glue so you go in the water it does not dissolve. But these are real shells, aren't they? These are real okay. shells, yeah, huh? but the rest of them are made out of That's cool. magazines, newspaper. Wow. Recycling. And it's That's all awesome. recycled products they make out of hand. So it's her and her daughter, they do this together. Cool. So we said we'll go and sell these products for you because it's so hard for them to go to Bocas. Mm. Um, and it's about a 20 to 30 minute drive and they have a car because they don't have an engine. So I go, well, we get the tours. We'll be more than happy to help and support you. Very beautiful. So these are bags that is naturally made from the pita plant. Um, so it's something that's, they, they take the leaf and they just pull from string from string and they make these little um, pouches. That's the black palm that had those needles. darts, oh, the needles. That yeah. takes hours so imagine to make this. Trying to pull those out without getting stuck. Would they use like a weaving loom? They have this Thing tool with that the pulls. Hooks. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. And the, the color is from the flowers up here in the tropics. So they remove the color, they boil it, and they um, dye it with the color. So these are all natural. Very pretty. So nice and sturdy, and they last for a long time. And they double as a luva. They double, there you go. No. <laughs> they use them, uh, actually nowadays, they use them to put their cell phones in. Cell phones, mm -hmm. I asked if they could do more rectangular ones too, yeah. because you know, for its cell phones and so on. I guess if you'd use it as a luva, you know, you put your hand on uh, Right. Yes, can I get there and can I get the feet it, and the heels? It is. Um, you might want to suggest to them, oh my gosh, make a new is, product, it's a luva. You put the soap you on the, here. You can put a sponge inside, uh -huh. right? Even a natural sponge. Maybe we get a kickstart on that. Down, and they have a little hand on you can use it to scrub your body with. Oh my gosh, never thought of that. That's good. good. Be a bit rough, that one. See, we'll be creative. No, that's what we're doing. And this is good feedback for us, too, so we can let them know and for us to be creative. Like Mm -hmm. uh, and what else do we have? Well, I'm sure the water I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Yes, thank you. So thank you very very much for the for, for the tour of the uh, of the products and we are gonna cut it here and we're going to uh, do a little buying and then we'll uh, we'll we'll start video again um, when we get back out on the dock to say goodbye. John, before you say goodbye, there I just want to let everybody know, Carlo never ever made chocolate before. Right. Right. We didn't even know what a cacao bean was. Mm -hmm. And I'm so proud of him that he won the best chocolate contest in Bocas del Toro. And Bocas del Toro is the chocolate capital of Panama. Wow. So that's pretty exciting. He won against people that were experienced chocolatiers. So Wonderful. I mean, yes. I was surprised that I won. And I wanted just to participate to, you know, be part of the chocolate what? community. And... They announced Green Acres One. I was like, what? Us? And what an honor. Right? And yeah. I, ha I have a responsibility now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of You're very You carry the message very well. Thank you. <laughs> and again, my batteries, two batteries ran out. I know this is a long video. So we're going to do handheld to finish this off. This place is absolutely special. Absolutely special. You're a little bit braver than you were when you first got here. Bitching and moaning, I would have worn my long pants and I would have brought an epi pen. But that wasn't out jungle to me. So Jeannie, just to wrap this up, would we you do need how, the for him how would you him. how would you say people need the dress when they come on this tour? Uh, I would say the shorts are fine as long as you bring some, you know, um, bio, uh, what do you call it, um, friendly. Environmentally friendly, friendly bug spray. Bug repellent, if you need that if you get bit. Okay. And closed toed shoes. And closed toed shoes, yeah, okay. it, uh, that would be ideal. Okay. Unless you have really pretty pink toenails because you wouldn't want to, something you wouldn't want to miss those. Because right. if your feet wobble or whatever, you can, you can slip, it gets a little slippery. Okay. So, hey, to finish this up and wrap it up, would you like to tell us what the future here is for somebody who saw this video and might want to come and stay? Hey, yeah. Um, if you're interested in doing one of our 
expedition environmental experiences. That little casita that we're building is going to be done probably next month, probably in April of 2021. So we'll have groups that will come down, they'll spend about eight days help us planting endangered almendra trees, help us with our coral restoration program, bringing back the red frog here. Uh, we'll be doing permaculture, all kinds of wonderful opportunities. You can find more actually on our website under environmental expeditions at planetrehab.org. And yes, and again, we'll link you. So, so did you have a good time? We had a phenomenal time. We, had, so we, we came in came. with no expectations and we're leaving blown away. This is a huge two thumbs up tour, a t place to come. And if you're in the area, definitely, definitely come here because Gary and Carlo are so nice and so knowledgeable. And this is really, really nice. Thank you so much. We are deeply honored and grateful to have you visit us. And I know how to float very well. Oh, it's just a little leg kick. I can float in even just regular water.